I've known for a long time that it's going to be a small group of people, just based on the side-ups we've had and, and also an inclination that I have, which is, which is that no one uses hand plans anymore. So, you know, obviously this is, this is uh, very specific to hand plans, but so many people use them that even fewer people would want to learn how to take care of the hand plane and make it perform um, well. Uh, there's a new, relatively new line of hand planes, uh, a genre of hand planes that comes with a disposable blade now. So you can just buy a relatively cheap thing that has a cheap little blade in it and you can do a manner of planing with that thing. Uh, another anecdotal tale about the hand plane is just that very often you'll see um, someone use a picture of a hand plane as their um, artwork for their business, to represent their business. And the reason for that is that the hand plane really is a symbol of craftsmanship. Very few people use them. I um, have almost exclusively used hand planes in timber frame. That's where that's my woodworking background. I do a little bit of other types of woodworking, but certainly the vast majority of what I use a hand plane for is uh, many different aspects of timber frame. And for that reason, I mostly use um, bench planes. So the three and the four, number three and number four bench planes, which are typically thought of as smoothing planes. Uh, I don't have a jack plane here, but the number five bench plane is typically used um, <clears throat> as a jack plane, and it is typically the first plane that you would use. So way back in the day, when we didn't have sawn timber, um, timber that arrived planed, <clears throat> or even boards that arrived planed, um, a carpenter's first job was to take a jack plane and flatten the board. It was roughly sawn by hand, probably. And then they would move to um, four plane, which is the number six or the number seven. As the numbers get larger, you probably all know the length of the, of the sole of the plane also gets longer. So the idea is that obviously as the sole gets longer, the flatter the surface can become. So first you would start with a jack plane, a number five, and then move to a uh, number six or seven, often called a four plane because you use it before you use the jointer, which is the number eight. It's about 24 inches long. Um, interestingly, often after using the jointer plane, you would come back to a number three or a number four smoothing plane to really get a very nice mirror image um, on, a, on a flat plane of the board. So the jointer you would often only use on the sides of the board if you're going to be gluing them together. You wouldn't necessarily use that on the, the wide face of the board. So typically, if you just try to flatten the board, you'd start with a jack plane and then move down to a three or four smooth. The number four is my favorite. You know, it's the plane that I almost always reach for. The exception to that is the block plane. <coughs> um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a, in a second. But, um, I think to understand what makes a plane perform well, you need to know a little bit about the plane. Um, so I've just described the, the bench plane, which are the most common types of planes. We've already just brought in of those, like a six and a seven? Or this is seven and eight. Seven and eight. Beautiful. So this is Lee Nielsen, beautiful plane. They make extremely uh, well-tooled, um, very well-designed planes. The balance on them is excellent. The weight of the body is, is fantastic. They use a nice, thick A2 cryogenically treated tool steel. It takes a very keen edge and it stays sharp very long. Comes with a price tag. Um, one, of the, one of the big advantages to Lee Nielsen is that they are generally ready to use right out of the box, whereas many of the other brands of planes don't come particularly sharp or particularly true. <coughs> what, what do we have here? Did you just go shopping? Yes. Very quick. This is uh, the number six Lee Nielsen, so you can see the difference in length there. And this is uh, a knot, another brand of plane. I would encourage you to try picking these up. Just if you're in the market to purchase planes, you can feel the difference in the weight and the balance. Um, and I'm not picking on the amount at all. But in general, when I pick up a long plane like this, you want it to be relatively well balanced. If it's very heavy on the toe, it's exhausting to use. As it comes off the board, it tends to die. Not only good heft, uh, but 
you want to keep the plane moving at a consistent speed. You're applying down pressure on the plane, and you're also applying forward pressure to move through the, the cap. The trouble is that <clears throat> as the plane gets heavier and heavier, it gets frankly exhausting to use throughout the day. So if you are doing a lot of handling, um, you, know, you get to a point where too much weight is a bad thing. All right, so all of the bench planes that I have here um, have the <clears throat> iron um, attached to the, to the sole at a 45 degree angle. That's what's relatively sleep, steep. And the, we'll move this piece here is called the lever cap. It holds the, the plane iron proper and the chip breaker in place. Um, and you'll notice that there's also a bevel cut on the underside of the plane iron. So it's bedded at a 45 degree angle, but then there's a bevel angle cut onto the plane iron itself. And generally that's anywhere from 20 to 35 degrees, depending on what you're cutting. <clears throat> so the angle that the plane iron makes for the horizontal is called the pitch. And then the angle um, that, the, that is actually ground onto the end of the plane iron is called the bevel. The exception to that is when you get into block planes. And all I have to show you here is a low angle block plane. Um, a regular angle block plane has the plane iron bedded at a 20 degree angle, so it's less than half the angle of the bench plane. This low angle block plane has the iron bedded at 12 degrees, so it's much uh, lower than in the bench plane. Having a lower angle like that of attack makes the plane more effective at cutting across the grain. It's a cleaner and easier um, cut. Yeah. Alright, so certainly uh, plane pitch is one thing that affects the way that the plane performs. Um, another thing that we don't really have any control over is the wood. You have a piece of wood that needs to be planed, um, you know, we can't affect that. Uh, the type of plane that you would choose um, will affect that. And there are a couple of different things that you can adjust on a bench plane to help with that. So what I have here is just a piece of pine. Eastern white pine, very soft wood. It's a pleasure to play. It's very buttery. The grain doesn't um, come into play too much. So this 45 degree bed angle with a 20 to 25 degree bevel angle works very nicely. As you get into harder woods, or woods that have very a lot of figure, it's got a lot of strange movement to the grain of the wood. You might want to increase that angle slightly, <clears throat> and you can't obviously just increase that in the um, in the plane, but what you can do is put a back bevel on the uh, plane iron, which effectively increases the pitch, the angle of the iron as it approaches the wood. So if you're working extremely difficult or extremely figured uh, or hard wood, you might consider putting a back bevel of anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees so that the, the pitch effectively ends up being around 60 degrees. That will make planing that wood physically a little bit easier, but it will also um, be less likely that you would split the wood or tear it out. So angle has a, does have a very significant impact on um, the effectiveness of the plane and you would adjust that based on the type of wood that you're, that you're working. <coughs> All right, uh, another thing that affects the performance of the plane is generally the, the flatness of the surfaces and the way that they relate to each other and the way they relate to the wood. So certainly an obvious example of that would be the sole of the plane. Um, in order to plane a flat surface, this needs to be reasonably flat. Um, just like there are dozens of different types of planes, there are also many uh, different opinions on how flat it actually needs to be. I encourage you not to get really, really crazy about the flatness of the sole. Uh, the most important thing is that there's no twist to the sole of the plane. And 